Our guests today are a trio of Sherman and Sterling partners up in New York City, Richard Alsop, Jillian Emmett Muldowen, and Christina Trauger, who are part of a team that authored the 18th Annual Corporate Governance and Executive Compensation Survey. That survey covers the top 100 public companies by market cap and revenue. It's quite an undertaking. Thank you for doing it. I'm Brock Romanek today on Zippy Point. So proxy disclosure trends regarding the board of directors, eight, the 18th annual s- survey that your firm has done is an awesome survey. Christina, what exactly did you find when it comes to proxy disclosures about the board? As my, my colleagues may have talked about in some of our earlier videos, the board really had a uh, uh, quite an increased role um, generally through the years, but specifically this year in dealing with the events of 2020. Um, and uh, their regular meetings, sort of quarterly meetings or monthly meetings had turned into weekly meetings throughout the, the pandemic um, and the various uh, uh, social injustice movements that have occurred throughout 2020. Um, and management has looked for more guidance um, than perhaps in previous years to address some of these, of these uh, additional risks. Um, from a disclosure perspective, obviously there was a lot of scrutiny from the SEC this year, as well as investors, uh, on the company's disclosure and its public filings about how the pandemic was affecting the company's business, as well as its people, um, and on newly crafted language and risk factors about the effects of, of COVID-19. Um, also receiving, you know, significant scrutiny was the company's uh, public response to concerns about employee welfare, health and safety, uh, and to the social justice movements and issues around diversity. So most companies' proxy statements were actually drafted either before or in the early stages of the pandemic's impact on the United States. So while we did see many companies scrambling this year to convert their annual meetings into virtual meetings, sort of at the last minute, um, the full impact of the events of 2020 were not reflected in the disclosure. Um, we, we certainly expect to see 2021 to uh, continue some of the trends I'll talk about um, and, and really probably introduce some new ones. So a few of the trends we saw in board disclosure specifically in uh, proxy statements in 2020 revolved around the importance of the board's role as really an independent body uh, with significant risk oversight. Um, One of those trends was that the the board size continues to shrink. Um, It started at 12.5 in 2015 to an average of 11.6 in 2020. Um, I think that that really shows the trend to wanting uh, the board to be very involved and engaged. um, And that's hard to do with a very large board um, and hard to find people that are invested um, at, at such a significant level. Um, There were 39 companies out of our top 100 that we surveyed that had separate chair, uh, board chair and CEOs. Um, Obviously an increasing number showing the trend of wanting the board really to provide that independent oversight role. And 73 out of the 100 companies had a lead independent director. Another important uh, trend that we saw was in board refreshment. Uh, There's a a continuing focus on this key issue facing the nominating and governance committees and and the boards overall, um, since they're increasingly under pressure to change the face of the boardroom. Um, Three of the principal board refreshment mechanics are mandatory retirement age. This is used very frequently. Um, 71 companies actually disclosed the mandatory, that they had a mandatory retirement age for non-executive directors. Uh, typically around the age of 72 was the most common. Um, Another way to increase board refreshment is to have term limits. This is really not used very frequently um, because companies often state uh, that the reason they don't want to have term limits is that they really appreciate and value the insight and knowledge that directors that have served for an extended period of time have to the company. Um, And the third, which is really an increasing um, tool that uh, really has skyrocketed over the past year or two, is the board self-evaluation process and how it's been expanded. Um, So a few trends in the the board evaluation process have been that um, there's been an increasing number of companies that actually have individual director evaluations as opposed to just board and committee evaluations. 
this is a really a fairly new trend um, that a significant number of the top companies have been doing. Um, and these evaluations have been done through a combination of self-evaluation, um, peer evaluation, or both. There's also been an increasing use of third-party facilitators, such as governance, advisory firms, or external counsel to aid in um, conducting these evaluations. And then boards are also, have also increasingly been addressing evaluation matters and proactively seeking feedback on an ongoing basis, as opposed to just once a year. They're, they're perhaps um, addressing um, evaluation matters on a quarterly basis. So it's definitely become an increasing um, issue in the forefront of board meetings. Uh, their companies also have shown an increasing, at an increasing level, um, a disclosure in their proxy statements about the company's response to evaluations. This is also a, a fairly new trend um, and where they're, they're talking about, you know, the results of the evaluations, but as well as the proactive measures they're taking in response to those evaluations, which can include, you know, reassigning committee structures, redesigning them, um, readdressing, reevaluating responsibilities of the different committees, um, in, increasing director education programs and the like. We've also seen uh, uh, an increase in the director's skill matrix, um, as well as various diversity statistics being included in the matrix. You know, the SEC requires companies to disclose the experience, qualifications, attributes, and skills that led to the conclusion that the individual should serve as a director on the board of the company. Now, you know, historically, that disclosure has been at the end of a director's biography. Um, increasingly, companies, especially the largest companies, have been including a director's matrix that compares all of the directors against each other and shows the various skills that each director has uh, in, in the form of a matrix. Um, now, of the top 100 companies, about 75% included this matrix as opposed to just the disclosure and, and the biographies. Um, in those matrix, there has also been an increasing focus on ESG and human capital management experience. Um, over half of the companies included um, either diversity, sustainability, and or human capital management skills in the matrix. And on diversity uh, itself, they've also been increasingly disclosing in either the proxy statements or in um, off frequently all, as well in their corporate social responsibility um, reports, um, their diversity statistics. Um, and we were sort of excited to see this year really some advancements have been made and some of the highlights have been that 53 of the top 100 companies had 30% or more women on their board of directors. Um, 51 of the companies have added one or more female directors since September 30th, 2018. And eight of the board chairs were women. Um, this past year, four of which were also the CEOs. So there's definitely been some, some exciting events and trends in the disclosure and the proxy statements this year with respect to the board of directors. And Christina, with respect to diversity, it's, it's really interesting to see that and that increase, and in particular also an increased presence of disclosure about race and ethnicity in board diversity, moving toward an expanded perspective on diversity from the gender diversity that has been the focus in the last couple of years. And something for companies to keep in mind, ISS has new policies out this year on how they're going to take a look at board diversity. And in particular, that if a board has, does not yet have a female member of the board, that, that company could be at risk of a withhold recommendation from ISS on the nominating and governance committee director. Um, chairperson. And in addition, ISS has an expanded perspective on policies that are presented by shareholders about disclosure on diversity and have expanded its perspective to touch on not just gender, but also race and ethnicity based policies. In this. So I got to ask, when you're putting together your survey and pulling these proxy disclosures, do you print off the each proxy of the top 100 companies out on paper to do a, you know, spread them out on a big table, or are you doing this all digitally? Well, we usually do it digitally, but I will, I will have to tell you, uh, we'd have to pull in some of our associates to give you some additional information. We have a, an extensive team that scours, you know, the, the different SEC documents to gather this information together and, and different um, 
the electronic sort of uh, databases to collect the information. Yeah, it's not an easy task doing it digitally. Paper is easier, I would think, but then you'd have to have this huge <laughs> like boardroom yeah. style table. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.